My name is Brian McNeil, and thank you. Oh, thank you for joining us for Let's Talk About It with the Empowerment Duo on ESP TV 7 on the SIBN Network, iHeart, iTunes, and right here on Facebook Live. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you folk doing? My name is still Brian K. McNeil, and that is still Lisa Santiago McNeil. And thank you for joining us on our show, Let's Talk About It. We come to you each Monday through Friday right here on the SIBN Network, iHeartRadio, YouTube, TuneIn, as well as Facebook Live. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning to you. Thank you for joining. Hey, Roz. Roz Interesting Jones. topic today. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, we do our pre-production talks sometimes as we're moving about. This morning, um, you ever, do you ever find yourself in bed and you're thinking about your business and then an idea hits you, okay? So, or a project that you want to complete or something that you just know you need to do, you haven't had time, found the time because you do have the time. By the way, if you ever say you don't have the time, it's an admission. You're confessing if you say you don't have the time for something, okay? You're confessing that you're not managing yourself well. <laughs> anyway, but when you find yourself in the middle of the bed, so that happened to me this morning around 4.15. So I got up and said, okay, I sat on the edge of the bed. I went to the bathroom and then I said, okay, now I got a choice to make. I looked at my calendar. I was like, okay, I got three clients to talk to today and I got some other stuff I want to get done. Now, three clients in a day is a pretty busy day. So I was like, I got three clients. So I'm going to need to be refreshed. You know, I need to be on my game. But it's already 4.30, 4.40, you know. If I go back to bed, what difference is a couple of hours going to make? So let me just go and capture some stuff. And I went downstairs to my office and never went back to sleep. So now I'm going to have to sneak a nap in somewhere today. But anyway, the, I just, the, but that happens when you're working in your passion. That happens when you're working in your, your, your business, your project, your calling. That happens when you're getting passionate. You've been there before when you got that feeling in the middle of the night and you just had to go to work. Mm -hmm. You can't relate to that feeling? Yeah, I do. I appreciate all your commentary. <laughs> mm -hmm. And yeah, I do. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Lisa explaining all she knows about that feeling. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's all she knows about it. Wow. Welcome to Let's Talk About Good morning, It. Again. Sister Roz. Good morning, Yvette. I'm grateful for you guys joining us this morning. Listen, so yes, I was waiting for you to segue because you started out saying we do have a topic today. And then you went into your nighttime ritual. And that, then you didn't. That's not a ritual. Your, and I would have got back to it if you had mood. participated at all. And I was like, well, I had that. And during our talk today, that's where did, I was waiting to go. But then participate. Yes. I have felt that way. I have felt that way quite a bit. I usually get up, do the work from my computer, not out of the bed, from my tablet. So I don't get out of the bed. I actually stay in the bed and do, excuse me, some work from about 4.45 until about 6, and then I go back to sleep. So I don't get up. You you get up because you have to go to your, to your office, to your desk. But I, I usually just go ahead right there, capture, do whatever I need to do, and um, go back to bed without getting out of bed. So, but today we did have a topic. And actually, this was a suggestion that Lisa it's made. on the screen. All of it's going to be on the screen. That's why I like this to have right pre here. Yes, that too. Okay. That's why I like to have pre-production uh, meetings we so that we can be properly show planned. And take, and properly remember like in the old Westerns, there was this for, one... Um, uh, Clint Eastwood uh, Western, as opposed to all of this segues. This is one Clint Eastwood Western, okay? Stuff where he was the hired gun to, to come into town inside in his own way. Clint Eastwood came into town as the hired gun, tough guy to defend the town, and he's kind of like having his way with the town. Anything he wants to do, and there's this one woman. She, she come jump up in his face. She goes, "Who do you think you are? You don't run this town." 
And he goes, ma'am, I'm sorry. And he tries to step around her and she dives in front of him again and she's all up in his face. And he's like, look, if you don't get out of my face, I'm going to show you something. And she wouldn't get out of his face. So he grabs her and takes her into a barn. And they don't show you what happens at the barn, but you have an idea. And then, and then she comes back, how dare you? But then she was nicer to him. Now, do I have to take you to the barn? <laughs> I do not think that will be necessary. <laughs> Good night in the morning. <laughs> I can now, The you. topic that Lisa came up with was seven tips to wait more patiently. Now, there's a lot of value in learning to wait. Would you say? Absolutely. Absolutely. I definitely believe. I'm trying to be able to catch the comments from our other channels. So that people don't feel left out. That's why. And then she goes like, You are so. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> hey, Glenda, good morning. Good morning, Antonio. Good morning. Antonio Thomas. Is that Coach Antonio? Antonio Thomas. Coach Antonio is Antonio McCoy. That's what I thought. Okay. I, I just saw Antonio, but that's okay. Good morning, Antonio. So, seven, uh, seven, tips to wait more patiently. First of all, why do you need that? Well, waiting is one of the um, basic tenets of life. And if you go back to um, the Buddhist faith, they talk about the three things that you must learn and master. The three things, the whole world is boiled down to three things, learning how to master these three things. One of them is to think, to learn how to think. If you can learn how to think, you can get yourself out of troubles and figure out how to get things done. Learning how to think the other one is learning how to fast so that food and the desire to eat. Now, it's not just food, but food and sex and pleasures. Learning how to fast from those things don't rule your day. I just got to get some now. I got to get this sandwich now, that kind of thing. Don't let those things rule. But the third thing is to learn how to wait, to learn how to wait. Life is cyclical. And life does make sense mm -hmm. if you can learn how to wait. Yeah. So, absolutely. So, and I think that's one of the first things that we learn as children is waiting. Is it how to learn that well? Well, we don't learn it well, but that's one of the first things we're introduced to. What are you doing? What are you doing? Whatever that is, don't do it again. That's what happens when you start with me. <laughs> Don't do it again. What do you think you do? Don't. You, that is disgusting. Hey, but there's nothing on your hand, on you, baby. There's, oh, my God. There's nothing on there you. There has better not be anything. There's nothing on you. I mean, I'm, I'm, and if there was something on you, how much harm could book is really cause? I cannot. So we do introduce waiting to children early on. Whether I don't think I think even as adults we're still challenged with being patient yeah. and with waiting. But you know, the, one of the first things we teach them is to wait to eat. Right when babies are first brought home, whenever they cry, you feed them. That's right. Whenever they cry, you feed them. And then the older that they get, the more you delay that. You begin to put them that that scheduling Maybe is a delay. Um come home those first couple of weeks, mm -hmm. um, they don't have a whole lot of verbal command. Mm -hmm. So what they do when they want to eat is they just scream and holler and fuss, you mm -hmm. know? So what do you do? If you're breastfeeding, you plop a titty in his mouth, right? That's what you do for the baby. You plop one in the baby's mouth, plop one in the baby's mouth every time they fuss and, and, and cry in the beginning. And if you have a challenge with your husband <laughs> at any point, Beginning, middle, or end, <laughs> when he finds himself consistently being whiny or otherwise truculent, you just pop one in his mouth. Pop a tea in his mouth, <laughs> and it'd be fine. <laughs> Good gracious. Oh. Linda, you said I got that. What you got? What you got, Blenda? I missed it. About, I missed um, it. The waiting, the point. Mm. So we came up with, uh, Lisa actually came up with seven tips to wait more patiently. Yeah, actually, good morning, Brittany. Good morning, good morning Wayne Brown. Bill, you missed a good one just a moment ago. <laughs> a life lesson for husband and wives. 
just a moment ago, Bill. That I, it's a lesson that carries over from babies to men. Oh, waiting. Glenda says yeah. she's got waiting. I don't got a lot of. I, it depends on what I'm waiting for. Some things I can wait very patiently for. But then, is that really discipline? No, it's not. It's not. I didn't say anything about discipline. The word discipline didn't even come out of my mouth. But waiting has a lot to do with that. So, is waiting a discipline? Are we talking about yeah. waiting as a discipline? Waiting is a discipline. Okay. It's a. It's a, it's a primary discipline. And you have you're saying waiting in a um, in a patient way versus waiting in the inevitable just passing of time. I'm saying waiting in a, um, a disciplined way, um, patience way. Yes, that. But waiting in the dis. I'm not talking about waiting in line and waiting in the grocery store. That's not. Oh, I, I know that ain't because you don't have that one. Brian could be fit. If he is anywhere near having picked up the most important thing, now it might not, he might even have one or two things left on his list. But if he gets to the front of that store and there's a line open, everything else to be damned. He's That's gonna get true. on that line, that line and he's gonna leave. It happened just and it doesn't matter. Yesterday, I had um a list of like seven things I wanted to pick up. I made my list of my notes on my phone. And I came down the aisle and the lay was open, but what I needed was on the far end of the store. That's it. That poor little thing ain't never come home. Nope. So now, <laughs> so when I'm with Brian, I tend to keep him at the back of the store until I've got my stuff because you will get left. Now he won't leave the parking lot, but he will leave the store. So if I need if I need him to be in the store for checkout and I need him to be with me, then I've got to just I've got to strategically keep him to the back end of the store. Because if at any moment he sees so an open register, that's it. We're done shopping. We're done. It's over. Brittany says I have a hard time being uh patient. Good morning, Brittany. Good morning. Well, to maybe today you'll get some tips. That'll be helpful. That's her. tips. P-I-P-S, since Brian has been introducing some other things as well this morning. Lisa's trying to make a sexual joke, y'all. That was her move right there. But by the way, do you know what tips stand for? What do they stand for? It comes from the service sector. But the word tips yeah. stands for to ensure prompt service. To ensure prompt service, and then you and originally they gave the money up front. Mm -hmm. You know, here's ten bucks, and we want to have a great time tonight up front. But now we tip at the end based upon their service. Based it got service. bastardized. Oh, anyway. okay. Thank you for that. That's yes. a little tip. Okay, so y'all ready for number one? Because we're only like eleven minutes in, Let's and go. I got a schedule, but you know, my schedule will be darned. So let's see. Number one. Focus, Focus on helping someone else. Mm -hmm. Now, this one has more than one value to me. To me, focusing on helping someone else helps you to become more patient. That's true. But it also takes you out of your problems. It also keeps you from being uh, feeling insignificant. And it always makes you feel better. You know, if you're if you're having the, the blahs with life, the blahs, stuff just is going along and nothing's really exciting. Um, you're not really feeling great about anything. You're not really feeling great about your day, you're like the drudgery of life. If you focus on helping someone else, you will find yourself enthused and energized. Absolutely. And that can help to really give you, I think focusing on helping someone else will give you the ability to be more patient because you also see something else when you're helping someone else and you see that there are some things that you've already accomplished or some things that you've already achieved that now can have value for someone else. Um, it's very close to the concept of giving. When people give, like when they give out of their, um, whether they have it or not, we often talk to the show about giving out of your, your abundance and giving out of your lack of abundance. But when people give, they realize that they have enough to give. And it kind of makes you feel more confident about yourself. Mm -hmm. I'm giving because I can afford to give. I give because I have earned enough to give or I have to give. Absolutely. 
So absolutely, absolutely. Want to get we got seven whole ones? We got seven whole ones. Uh, number two, focus on expressing gratitude. So much of your life is better the more grateful you are. You feel happier the more grateful you are. You feel more productive, and you move lighter and faster when you're more grateful. And here's the other secret thing about gratitude: the more you're grateful for a thing, the more you get of the thing that you're grateful for. Absolutely. And gratitude definitely begets things to be grateful for. Yes. It actually does. It actually creates the environment to bring them to you. Um, it, it, is, it is a wonderful thing because not only does it uh, do well to improve your mood and your blood pressure and reduce your stress, focusing on expressing gratitude actually improves the lives of the people around you as well. Most definitely. And notice the first two, focus on helping someone else and focus on expressing gratitude. Both of those things are helpful to those around you, but also greatly helpful to yourself. Absolutely. Number three, daydream. Um, Daydream, giving yourself permission to imagine a desired thing or want or place or situation, giving yourself permission. That's one thing that's sad about daydreams as a lot of times adults get that whole thing beaten out of them. Yes. Sitting over there just daydreaming. You better get up and do some work. Well, I, I was working. I was as a child, exercising my imagination. Even as an adult. You know, stop dreaming about that. You're never going to have that car or you're never going to be able to go to that place or live in a home like that. They get beaten out of you, you know, but daydreaming has a lot of benefits. One is chemical. OK, mm -hmm. a chemical benefit. Um, what is it that it, it produces more of when you daydream makes you feel happy? Oxytocin. Oxytocin. You produce more of it when you allow yourself a pleasurable daydream. Absolutely. Produce more oxytocin. And oxytocin. Oh, I keep forgetting that name. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Oxytocin is a great um, stimulation. I mean, you get oxytocin um, and endorphins from lots of positive experiences. Now, doesn't endorphins help you to endure pain or make you feel better? Yeah, endorphins do. And it may, but it also is a stress reliever. Good morning, Cynthia. Um, we get endorphins through sex. Well, not just sex. Sex, climactic sex. I understand you can have not Just sex, you can get endorphins. No. It no. feels good. So if you say it like that, baby, you're only, it has to be both. It has to be during. Because if you say it only because of a climax, that means the only part that feels good is the climax. And that's just not true. That's just not true. As a male, you probably have more have have more sex that has a climax with it than sex that doesn't. Right. Every time. Yes, women do not. Okay, so? So. Good morning, Miss Vivian. Oh, Lisa Pinto, yeah, she was scared to say, oh, made it shut up. <laughs> Good morning, hey, David. What's Good up, morning. man? Good morning. We talk about seven, and maybe we need to rename it because we've talked about seven mm -hmm. ways to become more patient, but the first three make you feel better, make yourself feel better. Maybe we should call this uh, not just how to be more patient, but how to make yourself feel better. Well, see, here's the thing. I think much of the disappointments in life come from the lack of patience to achieving them. So much so that we don't celebrate them along the way and we're only celebrating peaks and peaks and peaks. And because of the time in between the peaks, we have these emotional drainages. Bringing up so much stuff I want to talk about right there. Go ahead, because when you said some of the reasons why patience is important, because people are only happy when they've reached the peak. They're not patient until they get there. Mm -hmm. um, and they're not celebrating until they get there. Which is, goes back to the Zig Ziglar concept. When he was a young man, he used to tell people, you got to pay the price. For success, right? that's what he used to say. He used to put a strain in his voice and a crack in his back. He says, "People, you're gonna have to pay the price to become successful." But the older he got, he realized that that was garbage. That was baloney. That wasn't real. <laughs> you don't pay the price like that to become successful. Yet. 
to pay the price. You don't and got to. Now, I like what Lisa to. said, but he said, you enjoy the price. Hmm. You need to enjoy the price of success. Enjoy the price that you have to pay to have a good marriage oh. versus you know, if I want to have a good marriage, do I have to pay the price of a good marriage? Or no, do I enjoy the price of a good marriage? Come here, baby. Let me give you a hug. You know, baby, would you like anything from the store while I'm going out? You know, enjoying that would process. Would you like anything from the store within the first two feet of the aisles? Baby, would you within three it? feet of the door? You need five minutes to do your <laughs> You can never skin. get anything from the store that requires going down multiple aisles. You need five minutes to do your skin. Skin. <laughs> More store. than a third of the way down a particular aisle. So, thank you very much. No, no, go ahead and finish the whole list. <laughs> Bill's trying to help you over here. No, you go ahead and listen. Go. Bill says, Brian, stop digging. It's a trap. Ain't scared of her. <laughs> Bill, she don't need no help either. I ain't scared of that. But anyway, um, my point. Do you can find more of your standard routine you want to say about me in the grocery store? Because you can try like three times. Listen, it's not a routine. It's so a go truth. ahead and get it all out. The, the truth is funnier than any fiction. Mm -hmm. Any fiction it's at so all. It's so funny. Go ahead. No, I don't need to go ahead. We're talking about the seven tips to wait more patiently. Seven tips. Apparently, done, you don't have them. We've done no. number one, which is focus on helping someone else. Number two, focus on expressing gratitude. Number three, daydream. Let your imagination flow. Begin to think and experience in your time machine, as I call it, of your imagination. Number four, you ready? Yeah. Prepare. What do you mean? So preparing, preparing is, look, now I already got to go. I already got to wait. Um, let's say we're waiting patiently for a baby. Preparation yeah. obviously comes I mean, patience comes because you don't, there's no way to expedite it. I mean, although we try all the wives' tales, the walk in the casserole, everything, everything. But then nesting sets in. Nesting is preparing the environment for what, the thing that you're waiting for. And so you can apply that anywhere. You can apply that in other areas as well. No doubt. Okay. Is there any way you can relate preparing to how I am in the grocery store? Are you in your field? No, baby. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. I showed y'all this. Every time Lisa knows she's tripping, oh, and she can not reach and Turn around. She's in his field. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. I don't ever want you to be nah, in son, nah, son, nah, nah, <laughs> nah. Nah, you've been starting all day. Nah. <laughs> Yvette says, you need help. Stephanie, do you love them? I'll make you one. If what? you want one, I'll make you one. What? Your cartoon images. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, I like them as well. I did like it. Preparing is a way to foster your patience. It's our cartoon brain. You know it's coming. Prepare yourself mentally. Very often I have to prepare myself mentally mm -hmm. for certain situations, uh, even certain calls, phone calls that you have to make. Mm -hmm. Okay, with this person, I know I can't get this person off the phone fast because I want to. Okay, but I have to mentally prepare myself. Mm -hmm. That person, any anybody in particular? No, everybody. See, everybody. Here's, here's another one. Here's Lisa again. When we were here's dating, she going again. <laughs> when we were dating, Brian almost messed everything up Whatever. because he said, "We've been on the phone for 16 minutes." You were timing me. I'll have to time you. It's on the phone right there. We're on the phone for 16 minutes. Like, I was lucky to have 16 minutes of his life. That's right, Ms. Vivian. Men are so sensitive. They are so sensitive. And Brian is very, very sensitive. So, that's your whole thing? Prepare, yes. I was on the phone with you for 16 mm -hmm. minutes. Yes. And Brian doesn't stay on the phone with anybody beyond the necessary number of minutes to say whatever it is he wanted to say, hear a little bit about whatever it is that you wanted to That's say. That's terrible. That's not true. <laughs> <laughs> and then move along. Either you got a point or you not got a point. He is not really a chit-chatter on the phone. First off, I got people on this feed right now. No, that's not true. 
Okay. Oh, I didn't mention ministry. It doesn't count in ministry. He, <laughs> he will stay on the phone in ministry. Oh. That's right, Stephanie. 16 whole minutes. 16 whole minutes. Well, we've been on here for 16 minutes. As if to say, have you made your point? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Melissa. Good morning, Judah. Judah. <laughs> no outside today. Glenda said, "Keep it moving, Brian." <laughs> Use the phone. He is writing notes for me. <laughs> Everything. Okay, okay, you know, okay. Four points, and every point you got to say something. Yes. So the first point is focus on helping someone else. The second is focus on expressing gratitude. Number four was prepare. And these are the seven tips for waiting more patiently. And I really believe they're having a lot more to do with how to make yourself feel better in the process, in the process of whatever it is. Yes, uh, Cynthia, I stepped on a nerve. I stepped on a nerve. I'm saying she tripping today. He gonna be all right. You been starting even before the show. I was not starting before the yes, show. You was. Lisa came downstairs. I was already downstairs. Lisa was coming downstairs. I said, "Come on!" I mean, she was like standing on the stairs. I'm standing there in front of her. Like, come on, get your butt down the stairs. She goes, I'm like, she goes, why are you trying to go? No, I'm not trying to go. I just wanted to give you a hug, Lisa. Jesus. And she's going to flip out over that. And now, all show long, she been tripping. I came here ready to do work and do my thing. You know what I mean? To capitalize on the points. She spent four points talking about me in the grocery store and another part of on the phone. What's next, Lisa? Number five. Immerse yourself in another project. Sometimes we just got to distract, distract ourselves from the thing that may be further off, especially if it's something that we don't have any control of, uh, any control of. You're waiting for a delivery, right? You're waiting for um, a visit. You're waiting for a vacation. You're waiting for whatever those things. Any idea? Any thoughts on that? Immersing yourself in another project? I was wondering if you had any stories, any funny anecdotes about how I distract you from your projects or I immerse myself in what you're doing. You sure you don't got anything for that? He's so you in his feelings. You sure you don't got anything for that, Lisa? You gotta have something. So Come sorry. on, baby. We're around each other all I the time. Nah, nah, son. Nah, nah, son. You don't have any anecdotes about that, baby? Come on. <laughs> How often have you made comments about you could be working on something and then your husband wants you to work on something else or ask you to do something? Please share funny anecdotes. Come on. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not. I'm sure you have them. Stephanie said preparation is so important. I agree. Uh, thank you, Stephanie. She said, love your lipstick color, Lisa. It's actually four colors. It is actually that paparazzi pink from Mary Kay, uh, matte black, and a lip pencil, something or other. But it's a whole bunch of colors. Um, today on One Word Conversations at 11 a.m., the word is create. We get to know the word. Oh, it's right here on the Empowerment Network. And the word, the the guest is Dr. Sarah Jefferis. Jefferis? Jefferies. It was Jefferis, okay. It might be Jeffries with a typo, but I'm trying to do better about just reading what's on the screen. So it says Jeffries right here on the Empowerment Duo page on the Empowerment Network. Thank you, Miss Vivian, as well. Um, that's right. He, him show Shin Him mm-hmm. is Shin mm-hmm. Um, And definitely join in because Bill is celebrating on Thursday his 300th episode, mm-hmm. and he will be giving away for a limited time his new one word journal digital download. That's awesome. Bill, 300 shows. Congratulations. Absolutely. Um, we just cannot do that much work and be the same kind of guy. You just have to be a bit different person. He has got to, he has, has to have grown in some kind of ways. And I'd be interested in hearing, Bill, uh, what do you feel are the differences between Bill before episode one and Bill at episode 300. Absolutely. I think that'd be a very interesting talk. Absolutely. I will be right back after this message from one of our content contributors. Hello, I am William Brown from IamWilliamBrown.com, your self-awareness coach. You know how there are so many people out there that feel that they can do so much more with their life? 
but because it's currently not happening for them, they feel frustrated and angry and disappointed with themselves. Well, what I do is I help them tap into what is calling them or their calling so they can tap into their potential and unleash it to the world so that they can experience all the joy, fulfillment, money, and adventure they already imagined for themselves. Reach out to me at IamWilliamBrown.com or text me your first name and your email at 864-381-8139 and we'll have a conversation. Yes. <laughs> Great job from William Brown, our content. That producer. is the best you've ever done, Bill. <laughs> and you can tune in to his show once again right here on the Empowerment Network, right here on the Empowerment Duo page. And today at 11 a.m., the word is create. It's What's going to be awesome. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> uh, we invite our content okay. contributors from our network to yeah, submit okay. their 30 second commercial. And if you'd like to submit your own and want to know what it what it takes to provide us with your 15 to 30 second commercial, please, please, please just reach out. You can inbox me or you can send an email to admin at epublishyou. That's admin at epublishyou, and we will share that. Stephanie says, that was fabulous, Bill, and it was fabulous. We got to hustle because we're getting close to the song time. Let's get all seven in. I know what we're doing here. I am on a see, schedule. See, see, see. Just go. Number, what? Number six? Number six. Number six. Seems like it's very simplistic, but taking deep breaths can help to calm you and to give you this sense of patience, calm, emotional, lower stress, and even simply taking four deep breaths. It's called the relaxation response. Now, over time, Lisa and I have both taken several blocks of instructions on the value of breathing. We even shared a breathing coach for a short time period, but so much happens because we're taking just enough breath to speak. But there's something else that has to happen when you take a deeper breath, all the way down into the diaphragm. Now, for example, there's Lisa just hot, uh, mentioned the four deep breaths. To take you from anxiety to calm, if you take four slow, deep breaths, like, let's do it together, let's go. In. And out slowly. Breathe in full and then exhale slowly. Notice what's going on with your body. Let's do it again. In. And one more time, in and out slow. Now the relaxation response takes you from anxiety to calm with just four simple breaths. It's supposed to calm you down anyone. It's supposed to keep you from, if you're having road rage, four deep breaths. If you are having an issue, um, something frustrating at work, four deep breaths. The relaxation response is what it's called. Um, I even went to one speaker. Uh, she said to use traffic lights as your breathing cues. Every time that you have to stop for a red light, use that red light as a signal to take some deep breaths at a red light. And I did that for a little while. And just like everything else, felt good doing it for a week or two and then just stopped. Okay, but it did make me feel better the whole day. If I, every time I have to, because I was in the car anyway, you're driving around anyway. So when you look at red light, instead of being begrudging red lights, I got to the place actually, I was looking forward to the light turning red so I can take me some deep breaths. <laughs> breaths are amazing to your body, to your cells, to the cells in your body as well, to your muscles. It is so much, it does so much for your body. It's a wonder 
we don't do more of it. Melissa said, I had to practice the deep breathing yesterday too. And I also do mine in sets of four. It's a wonderful tool for calming the body and mind, a de-stressor. Yes. <clears throat> I take deep breaths. But Melissa also likes my sweater. Mm -hmm. I would totally wear that and you would look better in it than I do. Okay. <laughs> That's, That's true. Good. And Brenda Book of Bulls says, good morning, good morning, good morning to you as well. Uh, we got the seventh one in yet? Absolutely. And number seven is wait with other people. Whatever do you mean? It uh, A burden shared is a burden halved. Yes. You know, um, I like the title of it, um, Seven Ways to Learn to Wait. But I really think the title could have been just as easily seven ways to make you feel better while, you wait. while <laughs> you wait. Seven ways to make you feel better because each one of them helps you to feel better. If you will share your burden, if you will share your, um, even not just a burden, even just your expectancy, it makes it easier to carry. Bill Withers had a great line in one of his many, many great songs. Lean on me. When you're not strong, I'll be your friend. And I'll help you to. I'll help you carry on. And then as later on, he says, if there is a load that you must bear, you know, and he's saying, I'll share your load if you'll just call me. Absolutely. <laughs> Melissa says, Lisa, does Brian practice the deep breathing when he's in the fast lane behind a turtle? No. <laughs> no. I have a different philosophy about that, Melissa. I think that keeps me alert. And if there's one more thing that this earth needs more of, is alerts. <laughs> now, there were supposed to only be seven, seven tips to wait more patiently, but I actually came up with two more. Okay, let's get them. Number eight, break it up into smaller chunks of time or elements. Man, I got three hours worth of work to do. Oh, uh, uh, this whole thought of it is daunting. I got so much work to do. Ah, uh, how do I have to use that? Why don't you work for 15 minutes, Brian? Work for 15 minutes and then take a moment. Right. And you can even break things down into smaller elements if they are a year long project, a month long project. It is actually very, very it's actually a very, very good idea to break things down, especially long-term things into smaller periods of time so that you can celebrate along the way. M give yourself more than just one accomplishment when I get to the goal. Now you can give yourself 10 or 12 accomplishments. Amen. Even when we're waiting for a baby, we break it up into trimesters, right? Mm -hmm. So it, just by breaking it up, you can help to be more patient about waiting. And do your last one so we can get to the songs. Number nine, think positively. This is another one of those crime, I think, that people say. It's a crime. And, and let me tell you why I think it's a crime. When people say, you should just think more positively. Well, if the person has been practicing thinking negatively all their lives, mm -hmm. or if they don't know how to think positively, mm -hmm. that's classic getting them dressed up with no place to go. So how do you help people to think positively? Focus on the things that have already happened towards that goal. Okay. That have brought you closer. Mm -hmm. Right. So, and I, again, I'll use the pregnancy because it's one that I think we can all relate to. Right. But once you've passed the third trimester, now you're out of the danger zone for most pregnancies. The third, I mean, once you're past the first trimester, you're out of the danger zone. It's those first three months that can be challenging for pregnancies. Right. Um, so another way to think positively is to focus on the things that could go right. Focus on the things focus that could go on right. The things that could go right. With your imagination. Free yourself. What could what good could come out of this? Right. Another one is uh to count the things that have already happened good. Absolutely. That already happened good. Absolutely. Oh, nothing has happened good, really. Something has happened good. <laughs> I love this. Melissa's got a number 10. Number 10. Be anastrophic. That's right. All, All things, things we're working, working for are good. Are good. Right. He's incredible. Second time I'm mentioning Zig Ziglar today, but he had this uh, one thing. It was given a seminar. He was talking about you could do what you want to do. You could be what you want to be. And you could be happy right now. And this one lady, she was like, that's some bull. I can't be happy. <laughs> 
work for the most miserable boss ever. I'm a personal nurse and he's never nice to me. He's mean all the time. He's rude. He never shows any appreciation. He makes my life a hell. I hate working that job. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. It's the worst job ever. And Ziegler said, okay, does this man pay you to do the job? Yeah, he pays me because, well, do you like getting paid? Yeah, I like getting paid. Okay, that's one thing you like. Okay, do you ever have any free time for yourself or time off? Yeah, I can get time off anytime I need to because, well, well, yeah, but do you like getting your time off? Yeah, I like getting time off. Okay, great, great, great. Does this schedule fit your schedule, your life schedule? Well, yeah, I guess. And he kept going with her and she realized that there were several things that she did like about the job and her attitude about it could be entirely different if she just chose to. Just chose to. If she deliberately and intentionally decided to think differently. Not be pissed off by him. You you know what he is. Okay. You know what kind of guy he is. You don't have to let it impact you like that. Okay. That's right, Brittany. Count your blessings. Absolutely. Count your blessings all. I really think we live mislabeled this. This would be how to make yourself feel better. Counting your <laughs> blessings always make us feel better. It doesn't take that long either. Absolutely. So, That's expressing gratitude. That was um, number two or one. Two, it was up in the early part. So with that being said, this show is called Let's Talk About It. We've been going since October 2016. And we do like to thank you. We like to thank our consistent contributors. Each time you make a comment, that's a contribution to the show. Yes. If you come back, even some of us been some of you guys have known us for years. So we thank you with greeting songs and greeting logos. And who's up first? The first one up was Glenda. Glenda's riding on the freeway with makeup in her pink Cadillac. Good morning, Miss Glenda. How you doing? <laughs> that after Glenda was Vivian. Okay. Oh, Vivian, the is here. now the show can go on. Oh. Good morning, Miss Vivian. Miss Vivian is a consistent contributor to our show. We appreciate you so much, Miss Vivian. I think it's up to Miss Yvette. Yes. And dear Yvette. Dear Yvette, dear Yvette, dear Yvette. Good morning, Miss <laughs> Yvette. She's also a very consistent contributor to our show. Mr. William Brown is up. <clears throat> Good morning to our friend Bill. Nobody it's thinks like him still. We, we love, love him, him so, and we always, always will. will. Our friend Bill. That's our friend Bill. Good morning to you, sir. Uh oh, it's Brittany. It's Brittany. It's Brittany. It's Brittany. Brittany Thomas. It's Brittany. It's Brittany. It's Brittany. It's Brittany. It's show time. It's your time. Yeah. Good morning, Miss Brittany Thomas. A very consistent contributor to our show. Miss Cynthia Murray is here. Absolutely. Cynthia Murray. I got that sister with me. Good morning, Miss Cynthia Murray. How you doing? I We love, love, love your contributions to our show. Thank you for that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Stephanie. Stephanie. Life has new meaning to me. There's beauty up above, and things we never take notice of. You wake, wake up, and Stephanie, you're, you're in love. love. Stephanie is actually a show contributor to our channel. She had her debut show just last week, Thursday. And our second one will be this week, Thursday. That's right. Make sure that you tune in right here Thursday at noon on the Empowerment Network on the Empowerment Duo page. Woo -woo. All right. Who we got up next here? Mr. Mr. Price is up next. Hey, Judah. Judah, we don't have a song for Judy. She's she is she's a typically a lurker. A lurker. <laughs> Now it's time for us to sing our song. Melissa's on. 
Good morning, Miss Melissa Price. I don't know what happened to my voice, Melissa. But there it is. Um, today also is Tuesday. Tuesday is Dr. Deborah uh, Healing Moment with Dr. Deborah. Mm -hmm. It will be tonight at 8.30. And her uh, topic for the month is Love Under New Management. If you tuned in last week. I'm was, in Love Under New Management. management. How many of y'all remember that song from the 80s? I'm in Love Under New Management. Who sings that song? Question of the day. Who sings that song? Yeah, and the new management. That's right. You can get a free digital download from Michael Carson's book. Oh, just by winning prizes. Love Under New Management. And don't first Google one, it. The first, first one. one to post. And don't Google it. What well, if they have to Google it? I don't care who's oh, first. your honor. First one who says, who sings Love Under New Management? Love Under New Management. <laughs> and you know who she is already too. You, yes. you recognize the voice. Scroll so we can see if anyone gave the answer already. Oh, okay. Uh. Stephanie Mills? No. Uh-uh. That wasn't her. <laughs> that wasn't her. Unless I'm wrong. I don't think so. Say it again. I don't know. Oh, well, no. Brian got a check now. <laughs> Maybe it is Stephanie Mills, Brenda. Let's check. But I don't think it is. I thought I knew all our songs. But um, we got, who's up next? Brenda. I think Brenda's up next. Okay. It's Tricky Do by our home to sell our home. Don't do it alone. Choose Brenda. Hey, choose Brenda, 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 Brenda. Good morning, Brenda. Welcome. Yeah, I was right. Okay. Okay. So that's not who it is. Right. It's not Tricky it Mills, so it's still up. Somebody can get the free download. Of uh of any one of Michael Carson's books. It's not Stephanie Mills, okay. Nope. And you know who it is though. Vivian said, no, nope, it's not Stephanie Mills. <laughs> so keep trying. You got into the end of the show, 955 to figure it out. Melissa said I was singing Stephanie's song it's all day Morgan long. Either. It's not Melissa Morgan. Nope. 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 Um Melissa said yesterday it was totally stuck on my brain. She was singing Stephanie. <laughs> you want Cynthia Coleman? Stephanie says yes. Who sings love story. under new management? Y'all want some clues or some tip? Hit. It was not Melissa Morgan. It's not Stephanie Mills. And it's not Stephanie Mills. You can see her. I can see her doing it too. So can you. Love under new management. She's got a gap between her teeth. She's all hippie, hippie, hippie. A lot of hips. I love hips. <laughs> I love hips almost as much as I love big butts. And you cannot lie? I cannot lie. <laughs> come on, somebody got to give us the answer to that. Come on, come on, come Who's on. Who's love under new management? Absolutely. Absolutely. We did good time. We did good time. All right. So, so did anybody... we're until 9.55 to come up with. Oh, Mimi Howard, mm -hmm. Cynthia. It's Mickey mm -hmm. Howard. You gave it away. Okay. Well, she was. that's what she was thinking. It's Mickey Howard. It's not Macy Gray. It's Mickey it's Howard. Mickey Howard. So Cynthia Murray for the closest win. Cynthia, um, Macy Gray. What it, are in, inbox me your email address, and I will send you the link to your free Audible book. I wouldn't deny her from Mimi, and I know she meant she had the right last Mickey. name. Mickey. Got it. Yeah, it's, got it's it. Mickey Howard. You that said I give up. That's all right. Every day we're going to have a question of the day. We don't know where we're going to choose it from, but uh, we will continue to give away free stuff. If you would like to be one of the free stuffs that we give away, then inbox me as well. So how's your life going right now? Are you working on a project? Do you have a current goal or task? Are you working towards something? These are also things that make people feel better. Yes. Working towards something. Yes, yes, yes. Good morning. It's Leah. It's the Time is a wheel in constant motion, always rolling us along. Tell, Tell me, me who, who wants to look back on their years and wonder where those years have gone. Good morning, Leanne. So when she typed in too. Mickey and um, she, well, a spell checker got you is what happened. That's what happened. 
<laughs> it's okay. Bill says, you confused me with the hips and the gaps. Now, Macy Gray got the gap, but I didn't know she had the hips. I don't know if Macy Gray has hips either, but Mickey Howard sure does. <laughs> <laughs> I love hips and butts. And Mickey Howard is standing up and her shape is like. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love the curvy. That whole, that whole ilk. Nikki Howard, Phyllis Hyman. Love Phyllis Hyman. What yeah, but they had with? sad. Ex- Phyllis Hyman, you know, um, as we lay. She that got a lot of my song. Yes, yes that's my song. She that's got a lot of them, that's that. one that people. As we lay. That's like the go-to move for Phyllis Hyman. And that is my karaoke song, too. I love that song. Song about cheap. That's right. And I'm telling you, it's a beautiful song. I'm sorry to that's sing the thing. about cheating. It's a beautiful song. Okay, there's a lot of beautiful I'm songs so that have a horrible message. So uh, sorry. Pretty Wings by uh, Maxwell is a pretty beautiful song. It's a hit. But he's basically dumping her. It's a, dump, a breakup song. <laughs> <laughs> Stephanie said, not guts. Did you mean not guts or not butts? Not guts, not guts, but um, this uh, other Phyllis is soulful and deep and rich. Great yeah. songs are jacked up. Mess. Um, if loving you is wrong, I don't want to be right. Why not? Okay, but we got a great song, it is. Well, what's the song about though? Thinking of being in love with somebody else's mate, yes. Am I wrong to hunger? Yes. You know. Yes, I know you got a wife and children that need you just as much. Come on, let it go. That that's man is married. Yes, that's <laughs> yes, all right. Um, I am. I am so moral. I have a problem with some of these things. Lord you know? Jesus, Bill says I was afraid that it was Millie Jackson, and that would be a totally different song. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a recent clip. I showed it to you, right? Millie, Millie Jackson when she was. I want to feel it. Let me feel it. And she was going on the audience and feeling yes, up. Yes, you didn't crunches. show me that. You couldn't do that in 2021. She was just <laughs> feeling up every man's crotch. Woo, Be on yeah. it. Just, Woo, yeah. She was going in the, and she was feeling up men's crotches. Whether they were sitting with a woman or not. Didn't matter. She probably felt like 30 of them before him during that song. This, what a different world we are in right now, right? Could she get away with that today? I think that she could still get away with that. <laughs> I, I do, I do. I think that if you're a man, okay, I'm a man. I'm sitting there with my woman. We jamming on the concert. She's doing a good show. Next thing you know, she runs off the stage and throws her hand in my crotch. What am I going to do? I'm like, oh, I'm going to laugh. Well, they did most of the time. Yeah, most, most of them just the laugh. Yeah, because it's like shocking. Is she really going to do this? <laughs> She did it for everybody. Maybe it's the old Lord Millie Jackson. Yeah, she was extra. She was <laughs> at yeah, the concert, turned up the light so she could see everybody. Yes, I don't want this to be a mistake. <laughs> I want to see this for real, for real. I love you it. Look that up. Millie Jackson, I want to feel it. Yes, she was rogue. Absolutely. Absolutely. Amazing. She caught flack for her one of her songs mm-hmm. called Feeling Bitchy. That was the name of her song. How could she sing a song like that? <laughs> my goodness. My oh, my goodness. So just to recap, because I think that these are some really good tips, just like Brian said, some really good tips to just how you can feel better. So seven tips on waiting more patiently, a.k.a. seven uh, seven tips on feeling better. Number one, focus on helping someone else. Number one, got to be. Number two, focus on expressing gratitude. Be thankful. It actually creates this, this, this energy that both attracts and de-stresses. Daydream. Take some time to imagine um, in a positive way. There are so many methods that include um, just spending you know, six minutes to 10 minutes a day. Six minutes, six to ten minutes a day, imagining your desired outcome, imagining where you want your. Now, do you have six or ten minutes clear to do that? You do, but will you do that? Just six to ten minutes. They even go so far as to say one one thing I was reading about um, to sit in a comfortable chair and imagine if it's in your home and the kind of home you want to. Imagine if you're in the car that you want to drive. Mm-hmm. Imagine if you're on the boat that you want to take a cruise on. Sit there and and as much as you can make yourself feel that thing. Feel that thing. 
Mm -hmm. Hear it, taste it, smell it. Absolutely. Create all the vibrational elements that it will take to attract that thing to you. The more senses that you can engage say, when say, you are say. dreaming of a success, the more that you can expedite it. That stuff doesn't work all the time. It works more than not. I'm going to tell you that now. <laughs> Don't let the smooth taste fool you. But um, Ms. Vivian says more men would attend uh, Millie Jackson's concert with the hopes of being in the front row. <laughs> she, <laughs> she went up the aisle, she, too. Hey, the front row was fine, but she got the front row, but she didn't stop at the she front row. She didn't stop at the front she row. She went 20 rows back this way, 20 rows back that yeah. way. <laughs> yeah, just being in the building gave you a good <laughs> chance to get in a little touch. Oh my get a God. Touch from Ms. Jackson. Ladies, how free would you have to be with yourself to be confident enough to do that? You know, I think that's a higher level of freedom and confidence and lack of, um, lack of, um, what do you call it when you're you inhibitions? You inhibitions. Can't say that. She had, she had freedom from in her inhibitions. That is such a double standard, though. Well, why is it such a double standard? She was showcasing, I think it's showcasing a certain level of confidence. Absolutely. First, have a level of confidence to do that. Absolutely. But she had freed herself from her inhibitions that she could boldly go to strangers that attended her concert, yes. by the way, and fill up their crotch. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. So um, what was the part that you had a challenge with? That it's a double standard. What's the double standard? Um, men couldn't do that. Nope, nope. I wouldn't try. I don't know of any man that would dare try that. Well, we know of one. <laughs> yeah, we know of one. <laughs> uh, Bill said it's a higher level of crazy. That's right. Yeah. So number five was immerse yourself in another project. Sometimes distraction is the best way to wait patiently. But I think that 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 immersing yourself in another project can also bring you pleasure in your life as well. Those DIY projects, those little crafting things. This weekend, I spent some time crafting and I really enjoyed the accomplishment of creating the bling masks for um, Judy's daughter. Sweet 16 party. Sweet 16, absolutely. Number six, take deep breaths. How to wait patiently. Try traffic lights. And, um, try that as a, uh, a method to get more breaths into your day. Absolutely. And number seven is wait with other people. Share your load. Share your load with someone else. Now, we had some bonuses. It's now 9.55. We want you to go and grab something to drink if you're going to come back and sit down and have coffee time with Coach Ja right here on the Empowerment Network, on the Empowerment Duo page. And meanwhile, I am Lisa Santiago McNeil. I am Brian Keith McNeil. And we will check you guys out tomorrow morning. If you're a winner, make sure that you inbox me with your information so that I can get that winning out to you. And don't forget to have sex. Peace.